This is the XP Pen Innovator 16. I've done a shorter unboxing video with it and my first thoughts, but now I'm back with a bit more of a full review and my thoughts after having used it in the classroom and used it for distance learning for some time. Just full disclosure, XP Pen did send me this in exchange for this review and they haven't seen this to okay the content of the video. This is my honest thoughts. I think it's really important when we're thinking about this in education to compare it with what else is out there. And if you think about those whiteboards, these big screens, big touchscreen monitors that we have at the front of classrooms now, then this is a really attractive option instead of those because of the prices of those pieces of equipment. The Smart Podium has a eye-watering price, but this can do exactly that for a very small fraction of the price. Spoiler alert, I really like this thing. I think this is a wonderful idea to use in the classroom for educators, but I do think that there are some technical things that you need to be able to get over. You need to be a confident user of tech for me to really recommend that you go ahead and buy this for your use in the classroom every day. So I'm Kit and this is Gorilla Physics. On this channel we do tutorials and exam technique and study tips for GCC and A-Level Physics. We also do education and technology reviews just like this one. I'm a head of science and I'm a physics teacher and in my experience using the interactive whiteboards at the front of the classroom is not a perfect experience. Why don't I like it? Well, for several reasons. Firstly, I don't particularly like teaching with my back to the class having to sort of write something up and then turn around and talk I don't really enjoy that it's not a very natural way to present whereas if you use this you can maintain eye contact with the class really much more natural and you're writing at a sort of size that you're used to I mean it's essentially the size of an A4 piece of paper and also these big interactive whiteboards they are so laggy I mean when you actually write it on them it's like it's half a second behind you all the time whereas because this is a drawing tablet because this is designed for artists it's designed with incredibly low latency in mind and it also has pressure levels. It's got over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. And that's what, for me, gives it the natural writing feel. That when you press a bit harder, you get a thicker, deeper line. When you press a bit lighter, you get a lighter line. It gives, it, it gives your handwriting that much more natural look and it gives it a much more natural feel to write. So for an absolute fraction of the price of an interactive whiteboard at the front of the classroom, one of these really big 65 inch things, you can have a pen display like this one, like this Innovator 16, and you can have an inexpensive, just dumb TV without any touch support. And that would still come to around half the price of one of those interactive whiteboards at the front of the classroom. It's really worth looking into if you are trying to kit out your school or kit out your classroom on a budget. So to compare to the whiteboards in a classroom, well, these things start at 2,000 pounds. I find that ridiculous. I mean, you could get a TV of this size and a pen display like this for half of that price and still have enough money left over to get a visualizer or something else that's going to really help you in the classroom. Perhaps a better microphone. The thing about them is though they're installed and they're designed to be as idiot proof as possible. But for me using them is just never a pleasure. It's just the lag on the pen. You know when you draw a line and the pen is 30 centimeters behind you, half a second behind you when you write. And I can never seem to get my handwriting accurate on these boards. There's no pressure levels. It kind of feels like old technology. I don't just want my work to be legible, I want it to look good. I want to feel good about what I'm doing and I want to enjoy doing it. So this technology actually helps me achieve that. The XP Pen Innovator 16 is a full HD display, so it's 1080p. It's 16 inches corner to corner, as you'd expect. The size of the tablet though is quite a bit bigger than that. But that's to accommodate things like this scroll wheel. So there's two scroll wheels, one's for zoom, and the other is a virtual scroll wheel, which is designed to be assigned to brush sizes, but you can assign it to just about anything you want. It also has eight different custom function buttons. So when you look at something like the Smart Podium, it has buttons for pen color built into it, but you could assign them to these buttons here. It's very small and light, and it does pack away into a small bag, but remember that it is the size of a really quite large laptop, so you will need to make sure that your whatever bag you're thinking about buying to carry this in and out of school, if that's what you're going to do, is big enough for it. And because of that, I am leaning towards thinking that this is going to stay at home on my desk, and maybe occasionally I might want to take this into class and actually set it up. If you were in the position that you were teaching in the same classroom every single day, or this was for a lecture theatre or the front of an assembly hall, then this would definitely be a great option if you could set it up and just leave it in the room and only have to set it up once. For me I teach in loads of different classrooms so moving from classroom to classroom I don't want to start every lesson by setting up with these free connections that you need to make. Plus you need to use a HDMI splitter to actually mirror the image that's from the Innovator 16 on the main whiteboard in the class. 
Once you've got it set up though, you don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to be using it mainly for my distance learning that I'm gonna do from home. So if I'm going to be making videos, if I'm going to be streaming live, then I'm going to use this as a whiteboard from home. It's got a stylus that doesn't need to be charged, which is really good with a couple of buttons, and it works really well with just the Windows drivers, but it does have its own drivers that you can install as well. I don't know why every single time you test out a pen and tablet, the first thing you write is hello. But a click of the button and that becomes an uh, eraser. For me, doing things like showing calculations, it's just a really natural way to write and present. And this is just the whiteboard app that's built into all Windows 10. It also works really well with annotations over PowerPoint and you can even store those and have them animate in the PowerPoint for later or even export the PowerPoint as a video. So why not use a iPad or any other kind of Android tablet? Well, for me, the reason is that it's connecting to your actual PC. So you have the Microsoft suite of apps. You have all of your teaching materials that you're used to using in the classroom and you're just connecting a pen display to it. Also something that I've always wanted is you've got a mirror display for your extended desktop. So if you're like me and you use your laptop for things like your email or your registers and all your information that you don't want the kids to be looking at, you can have this dedicated to be mirroring the screen that they're all looking at. So you know exactly without having to crane your neck and look behind you exactly what the kids are looking at at any one time in the classroom. Or if you're streaming or teaching live, then you can actually just tell Zoom or Teams to mirror this display and show this display to the internet. <laughs> so you know exactly at a glance what they're looking at. You can load up things, you can load web pages on your main display, and then you can bring them across and you know exactly what they're looking at at any one time. This panel is a laminated display. So a laminated display means that the surface that you're writing on is actually very close to the pixels that are changing color as you write on them. That really improves the experience of drawing on the tablet. It's got all those wheels and buttons, although I'm used to using the keyboard shortcuts, so they don't, they don't really replace that. <laughs> as you might tell, having more input output for me is always a good thing. <laughs> it also has pressure levels, it's got over 8,000 of them, and it deals with tilt. So actually the way you tilt can be like shading with the back of a pencil or the sharper point of a pencil. You'll know whether that's important to you or not. I think the pen buttons and the integration of Windows makes this a really attractive option. One click changes between the pen or the eraser and another click, there's two buttons on the pen, changes between a right click or a left click. It did take about one and a half to two minutes to set up before I was able to start PowerPoint and actually draw this lovely smiley face. But once I was up and running and I was using it just to annotate over my PowerPoints or annotate over Word documents to you know, complete questions and show people exactly how to do that, it was a really natural experience. I was really calm, I was able to sit down, I was comfortable and I was able to work through some really hard questions in the way that I would if I was just writing on a bit of paper in front of me. Completing all bit in this, that's the time period. So while I probably wouldn't want to do that at the start of every single lesson, I did really enjoy using it. It was, as I was expecting, really great that I was able just to glance up, look at the class and check they were understanding. And while I'm doing that in my calculator, this is the next thing I need to do is I need to work out the, and the, sorry, I need to work out the acceleration. And that's the freezing of the figures because, well, we've been doing that later. Okay, so that's that, but why not just use a tablet PC or something which has pen and touch built into the PC like a Microsoft Surface or this HP Spectre? Well, they are brilliant, they are really, really good. I find that when I write on the laptop, it kind of wobbles and I have to kind of hold onto the screen as I write if I write a lot of things with the pen. You can flip it over, but then all of a sudden you're losing the keyboard and you're not able to use your keyboard shortcuts or do any writing or anything like that, which I think that's quite frustrating. And you don't have that second display. So you have to ask yourself whether you want the time it's gonna take you and the technical aspect of actually setting it up to mirror the whiteboard as you know, you've know got three displays to deal with them. Or whether you're happy to use things like freezing the screen they're looking at so that you can get other things ready and skip between things like that. Compared to a tablet PC though, it's also a really large screen and because it's purely designed for that drawing, it does give you a really nice writing feel. And it does give you a really accurate rendition of your handwriting.
Okay, so why not just get an inexpensive drawing tablet? This is a pen display, meaning that it's a drawing tablet, but it's also a monitor. So you're actually drawing on the surface that is showing up the writing you're doing. A drawing tablet costs a fraction of the price, but what you have to do is actually look up at a main monitor whilst you draw on the tablet in front of you. Now these take just a little bit of a learning curve, but once you do get used to them, they're fantastic. A few years ago, it cost quite a bit to get a large one of those, but now even a large one is at a really fair price. And there's even some wireless ones that would be a really good option for you, maybe moving around the classroom, or maybe you could sit in a position in the classroom and just be looking at your main whiteboard. All of these, remember, uh, being a fraction of the price of an interactive whiteboard. They're gonna be a lot easier to set up though, these drawing tablets. It's just gonna be one USB cable into your computer and it's just going to be using the main monitor. So you're not gonna have that extended desktop setup. Now that is really attractive to me, but for the convenience of just walking into a classroom and plugging in one USB-C, I think I'd really like to try one of these. So XP Pen, if you're watching, send me a drawing tablet and I'll do another review. <laughs> drawing tablets are just getting better and better and the feel of them is getting closer to pen on paper. And that's the ideal really, like you're actually emulating what you're really used to and really good at, which is doing your work on paper in front of you. And it's getting as close to that kind of look and feel on the actual computer that the kids are looking at or on the distance learning videos that you're making. So because you don't have to worry about that whole HDMI splitter thing, then I would really recommend that if you just want to give this a go, I'd really recommend checking out one of these drawing tablets. You can get a really good one for less than 50 pounds now. It's a bit difficult because there's that learning curve of having to look up at the screen whilst you write. You'd be surprised how natural that is though. Or the other difficulty of actually having to set up this thing in the classroom with lots of different connections. The other thing that you do get with a tablet or an iPad is you do get touch interface as well. So this has to be used with the stylus. The only thing this responds to is the stylus. But that's okay, you've just got to not lose it. This type of stylus does tend to be much more accurate than drawing on a tablet. I will say though, possibly the Apple Pencil is one of the greatest writing experiences with any stylus that there is, either the first generation or the second generation Apple Pencil. Begrudgingly, because I'm not a big Apple fan. <laughs> well, it's the best writing experience of any tablet or PC that I've tried. But it doesn't compare to the actual quality of using a pen and tablet that is made for drawing like this Innovator 16 or any of the actual drawing tablets that you can buy. One thing I would like to do is I'd like to try an iPad in the classroom and just use that as mirroring my whiteboard so that I can draw on the tablet in front of me, maybe even move around the classroom with it because you can use things like AirPlay or Apple TV to actually broadcast the tablet screen to the classroom. If you have an iPad that's compatible with either of the Apple Pencils, then I'd suggest giving that a go. Let me know what you think if you're experienced using an iPad or a tablet PC in your classroom. Please let me know in the comments how you find that and what your recommended apps are to use. The last thing I want to talk about, and I think this is really appealing about this kind of technology, and it would work with a pen tablet or a pen display like this, is actually accessibility. If you're a person that uses a wheelchair, then using an interactive whiteboard at the front of the classroom is basically not a possibility. A lot of them do come with adjustable sizes, so you could actually raise them up or down in the classroom, and that's designed to help with younger children reaching parts of the board as well. But if you're a wheelchair user, you're not gonna get much from those big whiteboards at the front of the classroom. In any case, if you had to bring them down to seating height, then kids at the back of the room wouldn't be able to see them. They'd have to stand up to see them. So it's not really a practical use of the technology. Whereas these things, if this was set up in a classroom for a wheelchair user or somebody who couldn't stand for large periods of time in front of the whiteboard in the classroom, it would allow them to teach in a really natural way, looking at the class and know that what the kids were looking at was what they were looking at on the screen in front of them. All in all, I definitely recommend this for a specific use case. If you are confident with technology, you're happy to set it up. If you don't mind that idea of having to set up multiple wires and the HDMI splitter, I think this is definitely an option for you. However, if you're moving between classrooms and you need to carry this around and set this up at the start of lessons, it's not all that practical. So perhaps look into using a normal pen tablet. So a pen tablet is, is just one USB connection and it should work without installing any drivers at all. Get a modern one with a battery-free stylus so you don't have to charge it all the time and know that because it's an artist tablet, because it's made for drawing, it's still gonna give you really accurate handwriting. If this is something that you're gonna leave set up, I think that you cannot get better than this. The XP Pen devices that you're gonna get something that's built well and built to last. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know your thoughts about distance learning and technology in the classroom and any other reviews you'd like to see.